N-O-C-T. These are four letters that if you've been around photography long enough, you're very familiar with. The legendary Leica 50mm 0.95 Nocta Lust lens, the Nikon 58.95 Nocta lens. Noct actually comes from the Latin word nox, meaning night. But based on the prices of those lenses I just mentioned, it's easy to think that Noct stands for expensive. This is why I was excited to try out this TT Artisan 50.95 lens. The amazing low light capability of an F.95 aperture but the price, unlike its contemporaries, is only $755. Yo, I cannot lie, I was very skeptical when I got this box in the mail. I know nothing about this brand, TT Artisan. They sent me an email and said, hey, do you want a 50 millimeter .95 lens? Of course I do. Got it in the mail, was very impressed by this box right here and was even more impressed by this lens. Fully metal, really heavy, feels robust, feels like something that is very expensive, but it's not. $755 compared to the Leica $12,000 version of this had me skeptical. I'm not gonna lie. So it's pretty obvious why an aperture of 0.95 would be something that you want to have in photography. One, insane bokeh. I mean, the depth of field you can get at 0.95 and at 50 millimeters is like razor thin. You can get this just insanely blown out background, which at night is really cool and also very great for portraits. I'll make you a deal. I'll do a portraits behind the scenes with this lens if we can get this video to 3000 thumbs up. Now, I recently made a video talking about how my Leica SL2, like most high megapixel cameras out there, has some issues with low light. When you have to bring the ISO way up, you get a lot of noise. So a lens like this is great if you have a camera that has a similar issue because because you can let more light in the camera and this allows you to keep your ISO at something like 800 maybe a thousand so if you have one of these high megapixel cameras that can get a little iffy in low light having a lens with this fast of an aperture is really beneficial to keep that ISO down. A super fast lens like this has its obvious problems. One, you are manually focusing it, and at 0.95, your manual focus is razor thin. You're really gonna have to pay attention to where exactly you're focusing, and even if you're off by just a slight tick on that focus ring, your image could be out of focus. It happened to me a million times, especially if you're doing something like street photography where you're moving quite a bit and you have a subject moving throughout your frame, you're gonna be able to tell when you miss that focus. So it worked a lot better if you had it on a tripod or in the photos where I was able to stand stationary and really focus on what I was doing. When you bump it up to something like F4, F8, the results are fantastic.
Now, real quick, let's talk about some things I noticed on the edit. If you're on my Patreon, you saw the video I put out last week where I break down how I edit my photo sets and you also have the tone curve from the Patreon that I use for all my edits. If you want those, I'll drop the links down below in the description. But when I was editing these files, one thing I noticed was the color rendering looked great. Also, these files reminded me a lot of Sigma lenses for some reason. In the past, when I've used Sigma Art 1.4s, the files have this nice depth to them and it feels like there's a lot of glass inside of those lenses. This lens felt very similar, especially on those photos of the parking meter booth thing. Now, one thing you notice in the edit with this lens is any area where a very bright light is present, you are gonna get a lot of color fringing. You can notice it on these lights right here. And it's really noticeable on this photo right here when you go into the color channels and move them around, you can see that there's these weird blues up near the fluorescent lights and these weird purples. It's something you can manage with editing, but it's definitely there. And honestly, it's something that I would expect from a lens like this. So I really enjoyed putting this video together for y'all. So let me know your favorites down below in the comments. I'm eventually gonna post my favorites to Instagram, at Evan Ramp. I gotta go in and tweak these a little more. That's where you'll see the final versions. As far as this lens goes for video and night video, I didn't do a ton of testing with it, but the testing I did do, pleasantly surprised. At 0.95, you get that amazing bokeh. It looks sharp. You can obviously stop it up if you need a little bit more clarity, but for video, it's not a bad option for the price and what you get at that 0.95 aperture. Now, no matter what it is you're using this lens for, you're gonna have to work around the issues I talked about in today's video. You're gonna get some softness at 0.95, which is to be expected. You're gonna have to deal with that color fringing and kind of the wonkiness that happens sometimes with a lens like this when you have it wide open. But the thing is, at the price point of $755 versus $12,000 or $8,000 even, I will take this all day and just work around those issues and just take the extra time to make sure everything is set properly. If you're doing portraits, that should be a lot easier for you. Street photography might not be the best for this, but even if you are doing street photography, it's pretty easy to just take that extra second and just make sure you're dialed in and you know what you're doing. Obviously, there is that occasional moment like me running to get that guy lined up with the lights where... You know, you're, you're not gonna make it happen if you have this at 0.95, or if you do, you're gonna get lucky. But all in all, really enjoyed the lens, enjoyed the video. Let me know your questions in the comments if you have any as well. I'll answer comments for the first two hours. Y'all are the truth. I will see you next time.